Okay, here's our drawing that we uh, used to make this uh, drilled block. And uh, I hope you can see all the things on it. There's a couple things that are written kind of small, but I'll point them out to you here. Uh, on, the, on the drawing, we've got a frame, and uh, this is drawn in CAD, and this is the one that we used, so I'm going to uh, just work from this. There's other sketches and ways to make the idea come to life here on, on paper, so uh, we're going we're gonna to work with the one that we used. First thing you want to look at on a drawing is it says material. This here is 1018 cold rolled steel. Uh, 1018, that's the uh, grade and chemistry combination of the material that we're using. Cold rolled steel means that it's been processed by rolling it through a series of rollers to flatten it, squeeze it down, flatten it, squeeze it down until it gets to its, its size. And you can see the size of our block here is one inch square. Um, when they make this cold rolled steel, it, uh, it gets compressed down and it's a nice clean surface, nice square corners. The, the bar that you get is, is easy to work with and, and your dimensions, like we use the nominal size one inch, uh, is going to be right uh, on size. They're probably minus, minus about two thousandths in this case. But uh, anyhow, uh, that's the first thing I'm going to do is look at what the material is. 1018 cold rolled, that's what we've got there. Uh, because if you make something out of, out of aluminum and it's supposed to be steel, it's, it's not going to do any good. So you need to make sure you look at that first. Typically, uh, it's got the date that the drawing was made, who drew it, and then there's a chart down here that tells what some of the tolerance ranges are. Uh, you know, if you've got a three-place decimal like this is here, that's 1.000, it's got three zeros on there, that means the tolerance will show up on the tolerance block as plus or minus three thousandths. We don't have anything showing it should be otherwise, so that's going to be our tolerance, and that's how our material comes in. Uh, two-place decimal is plus or minus uh, Five thousandths. Uh, one place decimal is plus or minus ten thousandths. That was that's what we use to um, get our our tolerance ranges there. But t seldom do we use uh, that that wide of a range. But that's that's what this drawing has on it. If you are doing your own project, you'll know what your specific requirements are. So anyhow, um, on this block that we made, I, I when we made it the other day, I, I had some assumptions that we were going to be doing the length and I didn't say anything about the width and the thickness because it was already to size. The one inch cold roll steel is right to size. Uh, they're like I said they're real clean and, and good dimensions there. Hot roll steel on the other hand is like angle iron or you know it's got a scale on the surface and and it's not crisp square or round sizes like uh, cold roll steel is. Hot rolled has got a uh, worse finish and it's just not crisp square corners and, that, and flat surfaces as much. Anyhow, we, what we have here is a three view drawing. We've got a front view, a top view, and an end view or a side view. Typically your front view is going to be the one that's most descriptive that somebody would draw up and uh, then the other views would show other dimensions that uh, tell you what the hole actually is. So what we've got here, we've got one, two, three, four, five different holes and we've got some instructions as to what the hole actually is. Uh, all the locations are up here on the top view, so it's a little easier to show where those uh, where those holes are actually going to be at. And if you remember, we uh, we had our end touch off that we found out where the end of the piece was and where the edge of the piece was. We moved over to the middle of the part and set a datum point right there as zero zero. That's zero in the y axis and zero in the x axis. And then our holes were all put in exactly an inch apart and then the overall length is six inches. If you remember when I moved the table on the milling machine I counted to ten. I went two, four, six, eight, ten because each revolution of the handle is two hundred thousandths on the table. So once you get your first location there then uh, you know where your numbers are going to fall in place as you move the table but you still have to you know know exactly what dimension you are at. You've got to count your revolutions and then bring it to the zero point and again, taking up the play of the screw, you always want to have your your dimension coming in when your handle is going. I always try to do it clockwise. Sometimes it doesn't work out to do it that way. But that your play is always going clockwise to get to your final number reading. Well, we're we're uh, splitting hairs here. We're one inch, three place decimal is plus or minus three thousandths there. Uh, so you've got to have it accurate. Okay. Um, so anyhow, uh, there's there's some things on here that uh, here we're drilling a 9 32 hole. 
you saw how we drilled the hole, or, or I maybe maybe you could, maybe you couldn't. I was kind of a distance away drilling the hole. I didn't have the camera right down in there. But a 930 seconds drill, which happens to be on the decimal equivalent chart, 0.281 diameter. Don't don't forget about this uh, decimal equivalent chart that's got all those little details on there for you. Uh, so you could you could use that to get some of your measurements. But uh, 930 seconds drill is 0.281. Then we're going to go over, the next hole is a reamed hole for a 5 16 reamer. So you're going to drill 1 64th below 5 16 which is about 297 or somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, 1 64th below 5 16 that's 16 thousandths smaller. A 5 16 finished size is .3125. We'll talk about the fasteners that go in these holes when we get a chance here. but. Uh, 1964th is 164th of an inch smaller than the 516th and that gives the reamer material to, to ream through and it gives you a truly straight accurate hole. Here's uh, this one here we drilled a 13 30 seconds hole in two different locations one for here and one for here. Uh, this particular hole we counter bored for a 3 8 socket head cap screw that's the kind that uses a, an allen wrench and you can see the counter bore comes down it's a larger hole and it's got a shoulder a flat bottom that's where the head of the screw shoulders against when it's used to fasten this block down to uh, whatever it's getting mounted to the flathead screw over here is also a 13 30 seconds hole and you're going to countersink it for a flathead screw now there's some things that uh, you know a draftsman is going to say okay I'm telling you what hole to put in here but he's not going to tell you what uh, what to use in all cases a flathead screw that's driven by a, an Allen wrench, that type of a flathead, the angle in here is an 82 degree angle. It's hard to tell what the angle is, but the reason you want to have that angle just right is because uh, the angle of the screw matches the angle of the hole. If you have a 90 degree, for example, which is used for chamfering or putting a 45 degree edge on something, uh, the flathead screw won't match up with the angle and it won't hold very good. Here, uh, this, this hole is showing to drill a 27 64 hole, that's the tap drill size, and then you're going to run a tap through there for a half inch 13 thread uh, tap. Uh, you, you can see the side views are hidden lines. Those are lines that are there, part of the hole or the object that you can't visibly see, but it shows that those holes are in the block. Here you've got the, the two sets of lines here. The inside line is for the smaller drill, the 27 64 which is about 427 diameter, 0.427, whereas the outer set of lines are the half 13 tap. A half 13 tap means that the outside diameter of the screw is a half inch, 0.500, and then it, the tap goes in and cuts those threads into the steel block where there's a 27 64 hole. So you have to drill the hole first, and then you can run the tap through there, and the tap will cut those threads. The tap almost goes into the block like a screw. It cuts its own threads and follows its way in there uh, while it's cutting the threads. And after that, then your screw will fit in there real nice. So anyhow, you've got the side views of all those things. That pretty well shows what the shapes of the holes are. But up here, we've got our dimensions. You know, it's easier to show some information here and other information here. So we've got our hole positions you know one two three four five inches between all those holes and it also over here shows that the holes are 0.5 inches in half an inch in from the edge one edge or the other so you've got uh, uh, the front view the top view and the side view now the side view if you look real close at it it's going to have the same hidden line views of each hole showing right there you see a pretty good uh, grouping of different hidden lines showing there so that's showing all those end views so that wouldn't be very easy to help see what you're what you're doing but here it shows exactly what the holes will look like here it shows where they are and then there's a top view now the reason you have two two views like that is because let's let's say uh you had this is the only view you had you look at this and you say okay i'm drilling this hole and and there's this outer ring what is it is it uh is it a chamfer is it a well, chamfer is kind of like the the taper head is it a big chamfer on there is it uh does it go 
you know how far down does it go it, it doesn't give you enough information you need both this view and that view and as I explained in one earlier video that a 3 8 diameter screw the head of the screw is also 3 8 of an inch high so you'll you'll have to counter bore this thing over 3 8 of an inch deep so if this is a 13 30 seconds hole I usually put a 13 36 deep counter bore in there because 13 30 seconds is 0 0.406 and the uh, the screw is a 3 8 that's 0.375 so we talked about that earlier that the 0.375 screw plus a 30 second which is 0 0.031 adds up to 0 0.406 so the so the hole here 13 30 seconds is 0 0.406 diameter the counter bore has to be 0 0.406 deep or a little bit deeper won't hurt uh, I'll, if I don't run out of time here on this thing I'm gonna uh, do the show you how those uh, different fasteners are okay so the countersink this also shows two circles up here so that doesn't give you enough information to know what that hole is without the note so that's why you have a top view and a side view so you can see the shape of that uh, uh, that hole that's in there so anyhow um, this is basically the the three views that you typically would like to see the end view doesn't really help you much it gives you a place to put your outer dimensions of the block one inch square but the other view shows all the dimensions where they're at here's shows what the fastener holes look like these lines right here represent the center lines of, of where those holes are at now like we talked about uh, you want to lay your part out this is a fairly simple part uh, we put layout lines on on this first holes because we we picked up our location for our holes off of our block the back edge and the end then we came over we had laid it out one inch from this end over to there and a half inch up when we went to start drilling our hole with our spotting drill which gives you a good mark or a place for the drill to follow it was right on the intersection of those two lines it wasn't kind of there it was right there so anyhow this this is some of the views that you want to put on to your sketches or drawings that you make so you can make it or if you give it to somebody else you have to give that information to the to the people that are making these parts uh, you can make a sketch like this or a print not everybody has access to CAD which is fine but the concept is the same you need to show these dimensions these kind of notes all your uh, uh, outside dimensions of your block you got to show what your material is you have to show all that stuff so the part gets made properly because maybe in a year you might have to make some replacements for this and then you'll know exactly what the dimensions were uh, and with your milling machine if you're gonna put these holes in whether you've got a, a CNC machine or just a digital readout or just dials on the handle you can make this block exactly right every single time the machine that does not have the digital readout on again I repeat you have to turn the handle so the play of the handle is always going clockwise that way this the play in the screw that moves the table back and forth will always be going the right right direction okay so I guess that's uh, 